You've probably heard of the male personality hierarchy. You know, the alpha male compared to the beta male, etc., etc. It struck me that these divisions exist in the karate world as well, and I thought it would be interesting to break them down. Um, of course, there are alpha and beta females also, but uh, since karate has been overwhelmingly represented by males in the last 400 years, I'm just going to focus on them. The alpha male, as mostly everyone knows by now, is the dominant leader type, the uh, likely to be an athlete, uh, the jock, the popular kid, the achiever, the one who goes on to be successful and has all the women flocking to him. The beta tends to be more submissive. Uh, the beta wants to please the alpha and uh, usually has women who are friends, but um, the women are usually attracted to the alpha male. <laughs> There are also sigma, delta, gamma, and omega types. This gets complicated. Much of the information you find about these types exists in the study of male-female relations. And there do seem to be some predictable social patterns among the various types. Alphas exist in nature also. And uh, the, the idea of hierarchies in society goes way, way back. Beta males are easier to spot today than probably ever before. Betas are like the worker bees in the hive. They are prone to conform and follow. They follow whatever and whomever is popular. They will follow alpha men and strive romantically for alpha women, beta women too, but they rarely get the women of their dreams, according to everything I've read. The beta will occasionally take risks, but uh, only to maintain social status. For the most part, they are not adventurous. The delta type rarely interacts with alphas or betas because they inhabit a different social circle. Factory workers are often deltas. They steadily keep industries going and are capable, but are unmotivated to do much individually. They seek distractions, until it's time to work again. And uh, all three of these types you might find in a karate dojo. What you rarely find there, though, is an omega. The omega personality is what you might identify as the geek in society. They're very intelligent, uh, but have difficulty with social interactions, and are either loners or stick to small circles of other omegas. High-tech is their language, not physical combat. A Star Trek convention is like a living museum of omegas. But there's another type that uh, is central to this discussion, and the points I want to make about karate are, are dependent on understanding this type, and that is the sigma. I really didn't have any interest in all of this uh, until I learned that I was a classic sigma male. Uh, and like most sigma types, I never really understood what was different about me when people said I was unique. It, it never seemed like a compliment. While alphas are on top and betas are underneath, sigmas are outside the whole hierarchy. Some people have it illustrated like this, with sigmas being at the level of alphas but outside the pyramid. Sigmas have some traits in common with alphas. They're both confident they know what they want, and they're action-oriented in going after it. But they take different paths. While alphas use influence in social structures to climb to the top, sigmas achieve their goals without playing power games. They don't engage in social politics as a norm. And if you know someone who's fed up with the system and is dropping out or quitting their job and becoming self-employed, they're probably a sigma. Sigmas are a little bit rare in the karate field, I think, because uh, they do not take orders and they don't give orders. Organized karate has developed along military lines where there's a clear hierarchy and discipline. I found out years ago that I was a square peg in the round hole of the organization that I belong to. I was clearly not an organization man. 
Even though I was one of the senior teachers in the club where I trained, I was looked on as an alien because my vibe was so clearly different from the others. I asked three different black belts if they wanted to get together and work out on a weekend, and each one of them acted as though I had invited them to a human sacrifice. Training outside the dojo was a foreign concept to them, as well as the idea of karate being a personal path. To them, it was a group activity, and everything had to be sanctioned by a national organization, and the top man, uh, whom we saw twice a year, uh, determined all this. In fact, it got back to me from someone else that uh, each one of these guys I asked to work out with me said I was up to something. In other words, to guys like this, a bicycle isn't something you ride for exercise or to go to the store. It's only for competing in the Tour de France. They were betas. So after 22 years of training and being treated like crap, I left the organization that is considered one of the most serious and traditional karate groups in the world. But like a crummy job makes you really appreciate a good one, I'm glad for this experience because I was able to more clearly see what I wanted and uh, was not going to waste any more time. Karate for me was a vehicle for becoming who I wanted to be. And so I went back to old style karate which was more personalized. The crazy thing about this is if you go back in history the legendary karate men of old, as well as the first generation of Westerners who brought it here, were individuals and not followers. Probably a healthy percentage were sigmas. You can't tell me these guys were betas. Alphas are already successful in athletics and social circles, so they tend not to stick with karate training unless they have their eyes on being a celebrity. And the Sigma Karate Man has a lot in common with the archetypes seen in fiction and history. The cowboy hero who takes action and then rides off alone. These were the figures we looked up to in our formative years, back before the 21st century robbed young men of their testosterone. We related to these characters because their values were timeless. Now, I was already an established Sigma from the standpoint that I became self-employed at age 24 and could never understand why that wasn't everybody's goal. After all, everyone I saw complained about their job and their boss, their landlord. Uh, why weren't they doing anything to get out of that? I didn't yet realize that your personality type either gave you ideas or prevented you from getting them. So if you suspect you may be a Sigma, and you have no desire to remain part of the tribe, fear not. First of all, karate as a personal tool or even as a personal journey is very much in line with being a sigma. Secondly, the tribe you can easily fit in is a tribe of other sigmas. In fact, I happen to be collecting them. To be really healthy emotionally, I think we all need some kind of group. Today, like-minded men are banding together more and more with common values and goals. And uh, I think our approach to karate here at Karate Hack fits those sigmas. If you have personal motivations in karate training, if you're individualistic and you're doing it for yourself and not to belong to a popular activity, if you're determined to unlock the secrets of old karate before it became standardized, you are a karate hacker. You're probably also a Sigma. Join us.